MaxSurf Motions utilizes either a linear strip theory method or a advanced panel method solver. The panel method solver is available with the MaxSurf Enterprise Suite. Both approaches have been validated against tank and full-scale testing. Uh, the linear strip theory method is useful for vessels with a length to beam ratio of at least four, preferably five or greater. So we're going to get into uh, showing you what uh, types of output uh, comes out of MaxSurf motions. It's pretty easy to set up the model. Uh, the geometry is read in automatically and you specify multiple headings and speeds for the vessel, uh, whatever sea states you want the vessel to be in, as well as uh, defining any number of remote locations around the vessel that you want to have a very good understanding of things like accelerations and velocities and displacements, um, the response amplitude operators, uh, even added resistance due to wave action on the vessel. It also provides uh, a good sense of what the motion sickness index is against ISO criteria, as well as um, the ability to check the probability of things like deck wetness, uh, slamming of the bow, and uh, prop emergence. We're going to compare uh, motions results for two different variations of an offshore support vessel. One of them is going to have a beam of 48 feet and then the other is going to have a beam of 54 feet. So let's switch over to MaxSurf motions and what we've got read in first is the narrower of the two vessels, the one with the 48 foot beam and I'll switch over to a profile view of the vessel. So what we're doing first is we're going to specify the locations, the speeds, the headings, and the spectra. So that's very easy to do with MaxSurf. When I'm in this profile window, you'll notice as I move my mouse around, the uh, lower left corner of this window is telling me exactly where this location is. So you can see I already have the bridge location defined, the four peak the slam, what I'm calling the slam location up, up on the bottom near the bow as well as a prop tip location. I've got three different speeds defined and again I can define as many of these as I want. I've got three different headings defined. Uh, 180 degrees is actually uh, the bow heading directly into the waves and then I've got uh, two angles defined um, slightly off the bow so we can get some rolling action and then for my idealized spectra I've selected uh, two different Pearson Moskowitz spectra one of them with a wind speed of 15 miles an hour which has a characteristic wave height of about four feet the other one has a 25 mile an hour wind with a characteristic wave height of about 11 and a half feet uh, I also have a John Swap uh, spectra selected as well. So what we do first is we measure the hull and in this case we're specifying 21 different sections, transverse sections using the strip theory method. I can visually see uh, how accurate the conformal mapping is to those sections by comparing the green line and the white line here and that looks pretty good for this analysis. I can change that if I want to um, by increasing the number of mapping terms. Next I want to verify what the VCG is and in this case I want it to be 10 feet. Um, this is where I would also modify uh, the roll pitch and yaw gyradii. radii. Um, for this we're just going to use the uh, default settings and I should be ready to run the analysis. In this case uh, we don't have a transom so we're not going to have any added resistance for the transom terms but I do have a couple of different options here for doing that and for the wave force we're going to set it to a head seize approximation. So at the push of a button I can start running the analysis. Now with the analysis finished 
uh, one of the things I like to do first is look at some graphs and this particular graph is a plot of the um, response amplitude operators um, at whatever remote location I select here and so you can see they'll change this is the one for uh, the tip of the prop this is the slam location up in the bow this one's up in the bridge um, in this case we've got the vessel going 16 knots into head seas but what I like to do is look at the calmest settings first so I'm going to select five knots head seas and I also want to look at my motion sickness index and this is comparing the actual motion at different locations against an ISO standard for uh, a definition of what's uncomfortable so this green line here is a maximum of, of eight hours exposure and then the next line up is two hours of exposure if I want to I can turn those off and just look at the actual values of the motion sickness index and these are actually in uh, accelerations um, so this is foot per, feet per second squared so for example at the bridge location I'll make this bigger um, I've got a uh, an acceleration of about uh, close to one uh, foot per second squared and I'll turn these back on and what you can see is as I for example go to the heavier sea state you'll see those values go up quite a bit which is what you would expect so for example if I want to get an idea of what that looks like visually in terms of an animation I can do that pretty easily by going into the analysis uh, calculate wave surface menu and I select an irregular randomly generated wave surface that is associated with that C state so the first one I'll animate for example is this is the vessel going five knots head seas with a um, characteristic wave height of about 11 and a half feet but again these are randomly generated waves they're all coming in at the same direction relative to the vessel but they're coming in with different encounter frequencies and with different uh, amplitudes if I want to speed up the vessel to 12 knots uh, you saw how uh, the plot updated on the right and if I animate this you'll see how the vessel just starts to encounter heavier larger random waves the other thing you can do that's useful is look at what's called the roll decay of the vessel and what that does is it places the vessel uh, it rotates it to a heel angle of 30 degrees and when you run the animation you can save the output the time series of the plot of the roll angle versus time to a file which I've already done so I don't need to redo it here I'm gonna show you what this looks like so it holds the vessel for five seconds then lets it go so this is giving you a, a very good visual idea of what the natural roll period is for the vessel which is partly a function of the, the vertical center of gravity of the vessel the geometry as well as whatever roll damping value we have selected and that can be adjusted in this here which is where you can specify what damping factor you want to use for roll and this really takes into account the uh, viscous effects of the water um, but what's interesting is is that if you do save that to a file you can actually generate your plots of the roll decay of the vessel 
and so in this plot we actually compare the roll decay of the 48 foot wide vessel and the 54 foot wide vessel so you can see how the two compare so what we're going to do next is we want to look at the actual results and we want to look at the results for a particular condition which will be um, not head seas but uh, more of a quartering sea and I can animate that so that you can see what that looks like so with with this angle there's some roll that's happening and if I want to look at the actual output that's what I can do with this table so for example if I want to take the actual motion velocity and accelerations at a specific location let's say the bridge in this case and I want to take those RMS values and put them into a spreadsheet so that I can do a comparison so that's what I did right here the next thing I'm gonna do is we need the results for the wider vessel so with max surf motions very quickly we can close out this vessel and I'm gonna read in the other vessel and I want to make sure I have the right input data so I'm gonna just reread that in I look at the vessel in the uh, profile view and I want to just verify my locations to make sure they're correct and what's very helpful here is you know, it's very visual I can see the bridge looks like it's in the right place the four peak etc so all of this looks correct and I need to just um, make sure I measure the hull with the same parameters and specify uh, the VCG so for this vessel the VCG um, I'm gonna actually I'll just leave it at 11 feet let's run this analysis Now with the analysis finished for the wider vessel, I can copy these specific results that I want to study a little closer for my comparison. And what I also will do is animate this vessel in uh, the uh, PM25C state and pull up my results from the two different vessels and I could study both of these um, and see how the two different vessels compare. So this gives you a good idea of how powerful MaxSurf motions can be to get some pretty quick answers to something as complex as uh, motions on a vessel in all kinds of uh, random sea spectra. So with that I'd like to wrap this up. Uh, we thank you for joining us and please visit our website for a lot more detailed information and links on MaxSurf. Have a great day.